Crane calls in the heavy hitters. This is your look at the new NECA toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Trag, and Granitor. After being accidentally exposed to radioactive ooze, four ordinary household pets are transformed into a band of wise-cracking, pizza-loving, villain-dicing adolescent reptiles. Meet Leonardo, the super-cool sword-wielding leader, Raphael, the hothead hurling manholes and one-liners in rapid succession, Donatello, the brain behind the brawn, and Michelangelo, the ice cream pizza gobbling party animal. Whether it's facing fierce enemies or saving humanity from near extinction, with the guidance of their sensei, these heroes in a half shell are always ready for straight out of the sewer action. Before we start rocking out on new turtle figure releases from NECA Toys, I'm here all night. The first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figures stand. And I think we're going to start first with Trag. And stopping the very tape measure at the very top of his head, right there, right on top of his helmet. You're looking at the figure standing 6.4 inches in height. Switching that immediately to centimeters. Then you're looking at the figure standing 16.2. So a little over 16 centimeters tall. Uh, as a personal favorite of mine, I actually like, I think, Granitor just a little bit more. I always really liked the design of him. Don't get me wrong, Trag was pretty cool, but I think I liked Preferred of the two. I think I like Granitor just a little bit more. Taking the tape measure now to the very top of Granitor's head, stopping it right there. According to the readout, yes, he is, of course, going to be a little bit taller. He stands 7.3 inches in height. And then we can switch that to centimeters. You're looking at the figure standing 18.5 centimeters tall. Of course, we can get some size comparisons going. And of course, if these rock soldiers are from Dimension X, the most logical size comparison we could make is with Krang. Now, he's not as much an impressive self until, of course, we get the android Krang body, which we have been teased by NECA Toys. I'm very, very excited for that. But it kind of gives you an idea of how the Rock Soldiers stack up to, say, the likes of Krang. And while we also bring in for some size comparisons, the man who shouldn't be opening up portals, not knowing, of course, what would be coming through, there is Shredder as a display as well. Other comparisons we can also make for much larger figures released by NECA Toys. Here is, of course, Bebop, and we can also bring in Rocksteady. Let's put Rocksteady right there. Rocksteady and Bebop are roughly about the same height as the Rock Soldiers. I would give maybe Granitor just a little bit of extra clearance above that. And then just for good measures, let's bring in one of the Turtles. We'll just bring in poor Michelangelo. Doesn't realize what he had to sign on for. But it gives you an idea of how big these rock soldiers are. Both Trag and Granitor are considerably bigger than some of these other figures. They're about the same height, granted, as the Rocksteady and the Bebop, but quite considerably bigger and bulkier. Now, Trag and Granitor have a special place in my heart because they're pulled from my favorite episode of the entire run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Episode 4, entitled The Hot Rodding Teenagers from Dimension X, has some notable things going for it. It obviously introduces Trag and Granitor for the very first time to the viewing audience. It introduces the neutrinos, which were also created specifically for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles TV series. And one other thing that this particular episode does have an award for is it's the first episode that also introduces us to the turtle van. How about that? Also, I just as a little side note too, I find specifically this episode has the best animation of all of the entire series. In fact, usually when I go back and I watch the Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoons, I usually only stick to like the first half dozen or so episodes. It's those first four or five episodes that really has some of the best animation around. Not even just talking for Turtles cartoons, but just cartoons in general. You really need to go back and re-watch Hot Rodding Teenagers from Dimension X just to see how good the animation style is back then. Needless to say, my own personal experiences and opinions of the Turtles cartoon aside, let's have a look at the accessories that come included with Trag and Granitor. The first thing I want to bring to your attention, and I'm really interested and curious, 
as to why NECA decided to do these, but I'm really thrilled for the fact that we actually did get them. And that is these little wanted posters of the three neutrinos. The three neutrinos being Zack, Dask, and of course Kayla. These are done in a translucent, it almost kind of reminds me of the red plastic that used to come included with the G1 Transformers. I mean, you can barely make out, it probably helps if I put my hand in front of it, the fact that you can see, yes, they are wanted posters, and they're done in sort of a holographic look. Really, really thrilled the fact that we got these. I would have been content and fine for the fact that we got ourselves blasters, as well as the communication device that we got. We didn't get one accessory. I'll talk about that in a second. But the fact that we did get ourselves three wanted posters of the neutrinos is pretty cool. I wasn't expecting it. Pretty cool the fact that we did actually get these. Not really sure what I'm going to do with these. I get. I guess I could possibly, possibly, possibly slip them into one of their hands and have them just carrying around with them. So you do get those. We'll put those to the side. You do also get yourself a canister. Now, this canister isn't unique necessarily to this set. In fact, I can bring over the one that came included packaged with the Shredder and Krang 2-pack. And you can see it's the same identical canister. Let me just spin it around so I get the proper mold lined up. Yeah, they're the exact same canister. One just happens to be blue with a shading of dark navy. And this one just happens to be gray. Now, I honestly feel, I do like the fact that we did get the wanted posters, but I almost feel like I would have just traded this up, the canister, in favor of the weather controlling orb that they use at the end of, this, of that episode. I think that would have been a much nicer touch to get that little sphere that, of course, they throw up into the sky and causes chaos with weather. I think that would have been a nice welcomed scene-specific accessory. And again, I'm fine the fact that we did get ourselves a canister, but I feel like the weather controlling device would have made much more sense. Moving out to the side, the other thing that we get included, and something we get a lot of when it comes to these turtle releases, is a Dimension X communicator. I had jokingly said this during one of the review premieres that you guys could certainly be on board for if you like, uh, but I did mention that I would like to see NECA get into role-playing pieces. In other words, give us like a Dimension X communicator, like a one-to-one -one scale uh, communicator from Dimension X. And then you can maybe have like different view screens that you could switch in and out sheets. It didn't have to be light up. Maybe it had batteries or it could have little sound effects or something when you press the button. But imagine, if you will, a one-to-one -one scale of this or a one-to-one -one scale of the Turtle communicator. Just something I think that NECA toys could entertain as something that they could do to expand on the existing turtle figures that we're getting now. The two rock soldiers also get a pair of matching Dimension X blasters. Little tiny pistols that they can carry around with them. And there's actually two places that you can store them on the figure. The, the main one, I suppose, would be in their hands. And one hand is a little bit bigger, I've noticed, than the other. If you put, say, for example, the pistol on this side, I feel like it sits a little loose. It still stays in his hand, but a little bit of banging that will fall out of his hand, no doubt. The other option is to put it into this hand, and it does involve you sort of having to twist, twist the handle just into the grip like this. And it is tight quarters, but at least on this side, I feel it stays in better place, and it's less likely to fall out. And that's actually the case also when we have a look at Granitor. The other place that you can store these pistols, wiggle them back out from the hands, freeing themselves from their grips, is that you can also house them inside the side holsters that both Granitor and Trag do feature on the side here. Uh, that's actually, again, the case on both of them if we look at Granitor. Granitor does have the exact same holster. It's a different color, mind you, but it holds and houses the pistol the exact same way. I'm going to put down Granitor, and we're going to look at Trag first. Personally, for me, I was a bigger fan of Granitor's design, but I like the fact that we do get ourselves Trag. Now, the thing about Trag, though, is he's notable in the fact that while Granitor doesn't make many other appearances, Trag at least makes several more appearances in just carbon copy rock soldiers. Another one of my favorite standout episodes in the Turtles cartoon times was the one, the episode where I think they're using the generators for Niagara Falls to try to power the Technodrome. And Krang sends down several foot soldiers and several rock soldiers down to protect it. I mean, while we don't have necessarily, you could, I suppose, buy more of these. 
I hope we do get ourselves like a army building set that we're going to get multiple rock soldiers in. That will be slightly different from Trag's design, but really not all that much, considering that they've already got the mold ready and on the standby. I feel like NECA could easily just re-release this guy as the Rock Soldiers 2-pack, maybe even just a single pack, or maybe what they could do is a Rock Soldier and Foot Soldier 2-pack as just an option, because of course, like this guy is going to have a lot more bulkier plastic and going to be a lot more expensive to produce versus, say, a standout, uh, just a regular Foot Soldier. So looking at the face sculpt for for uh, the Trag here, I'm like looking at him, I'm kind of thinking like he looks like the Thing. And I wonder if that's where some inspiration came from. Of course, this one does have the helmet on the top. Done very nicely in a almost military green with this lighter lime green right at the top and banded around it. What I do like about these both, both of these figures is the fact that all the details that are painted in are then gone back to by NECA and panel outlined. You can see that around the areas of his biceps or his pectorals, his biceps over here, his abdomens are all areas that have additional panel lining done to it. And I really like that. Not only does it look more cartoon accurate, but it does also enhance some of the molding that they put into these figures. Like the areas on the back, for example, stand out a lot more by introducing those panel lines. I'm really glad that they've done that. When I look at the two figures, it does seem like they share some mold elements, like the hands, for example, and below the waist here, basically from the belt down. If you look at the two figures side to side, it does in fact look like they've used the exact same molds. Uh, maybe not necessarily on the arms, because the, the, the forearms do look like they're different. And of course, Granitor has the notable larger spikes on his shoulders. But I think maybe a lot of the torso elements are shared the lower half most definitely is shared and the boots are also the same thing changed over just with a different coat of paint and again i'm fine for that i mean you could probably look at the cartoon episode and say well i don't know i don't know granitor looks like he has slightly different lower legs but i think for me i'm fine for the fact that they're reusing molds really on all of these figures if it does mean that we get more of these figures Quickly looking again at his belt, he's got a few little ammunition shells and stuff like that around his area, and painted all nicely in gray with the shells themselves done in, or bullets themselves done in almost a more beige color. Again, you've got that panel lining done not only around the actual holster, but also, of course, on the gun. Something I didn't mention earlier when we were looking at it, but all those little touches of detail are the things I really appreciate about this new line of Turtles figures. Quickly spinning around one last time and looking at Trag's details on the back of the figure. I love the fact that you've got these little, is it stalagmites or stalactites? These little rock pieces that stick out from the wall or usually a ceiling. It has the same similar thing also on his bicep as well. Looking at the figure's articulation, his head rotates all the way around. I feel a little more confident doing it with trag than I do with Granitor. I'll talk more about that in a second. The head moves up and down and of course you can also rock it back and forth. The shoulders hinge out. Now there's a little more restrictions as you could probably imagine because there's so much additional sculpting that they put to give it that look of rock is also the thing that does limit a little bit of what you're doing with his arms. His arms give you only about a 45 degree angle bend. You could try to bend it a little bit more than that but I'm already experiencing a sense of resistance and that's more than enough to tell me to stop what I'm doing and don't push it any further. The arms do rotate all the way around. They do get a little on the tight side. Again, the same sort of problem experiences here. So I wouldn't maybe, even though it does rotate all the way around, I think is when you, you're fighting it like this is where you make the careless mistake of breaking things on figures. Just know the limitations when it comes to these figures. Can the arms technically rotate all the way around? Sure, yes, they could. They could. Should you do that at the risk of breaking one of the joints? I would say just, just don't, just don't. Be smart. Um, he doesn't have any articulation in the bicep because essentially like the bicep is molded to the shoulder, even though technically the way that they panel lined it, it almost gives you a misleading idea that you can rotate it at the bicep. But instead, what he does have is the bicep, the swivel down here on the forearm. In addition to that, he has a double hinge on the elbow and you can also rotate both the forearm, as I just already mentioned, and you can also rotate his hand independently and you can also hinge that back and forth. The upper torso has a ball joint. 
and the lower torso seems to have a ball joint as it seems to be able to rotate, but mine is just really on the tight side, but you can still rotate it. The legs split out. Uh, you kind of also can kind of see the way that it's pegged in place. I don't know why I always do this in these reviews. I feel the need to show you the undercarriage of these figures, but just to show you that they use very large ball joints as they should for a figure of this size. The legs go forward and back. You can rotate at the top cut of the thigh. You can single hinge the knee, rotate the lower leg. He doesn't have any articulation in the boots, but he most definitely has it in the foot. It moves up and down, rocking back and forth. I thought he did have articulation in the toe when I saw him initially in the packaging, although in further inspection, the figure doesn't have toe articulation. It's just one solid mold, as you can see right there. And there is Trag. Moving him over there and putting him down to the side, let's now have a look at Granitor. And of me, at least my own personal opinion, I prefer and have always liked the design of Granitor much more than I like the design of Trag. So looking at Granitor now, there's not that much that's different for construction between one to the other. There are things, yes, they've retooled, like for example, this open collared area of Granitor that Trag didn't actually have. Trag also had the additional sculpting of rock along the top of his shoulder where Granitor doesn't have that. The other big thing about Granitor is he has these giant shoulder pads. Again, I've always really liked this design of character a little bit more. The very obvious long nose that he has, more of a slightly skinnier neck, which is a little bit more something I'm going to be talking about when it comes to the articulation. But it, I find for the two, I've always really liked Granitor just a little bit more. All the colors now have gone from more of those rusted browns to more traditional granite colors, as Granitor li living up to his name, of course. You can see that he's got mostly all dark surfaced gray with all these nice light accented areas around the shoulders, the areas around his torso, even like his collar has that lighter color as well as also in his face. I love his face sculpt. Didn't It's not the fact that I don't like Trag necessarily, but I just think that Granitor has a lot more personality going for him. As you can see, he does also have a medal on his. Now, Trag does also have that little lightning bolt medal, but I do like the design of having this one on Granitor. Not much, again, does change between the two figures. The lower torso is pretty much just the same. And you can really understand that they would have reused the torso with changing a few little elements to it. Like, again, this area of the collar and smoothing out this section here, which will play a big significant role when we talk about his articulation. Thank goodness he doesn't have as much sculpted here because it does, it would most definitely limit what you can then do with his arms. Uh, his hands and, and forearms don't look like they change too much. I do think, again, like when I look at the forearms, the forearms do feel like and look differently. Like there's a little notch here on Granitors that isn't on Trags. So again, they've changed it in a slight bit. So it's not simply just they've just given him a brand new head and given him different shoulders and it's a brand new figure. No, there are things to it, like his forearms, for example, that are different noticeably than Trags. Uh, now, this particular one does have some issues, not necessarily issues in the fact that you would have to be careful that the figure is going to be breaking on you, but things like as an adult collector, you sort of know the limitations that some figures may have. You also know when things are a little bit smaller on figures, like for example, when we look at Granitor's neck, it is noticeably thinner than Trag's. And along with that sort of goes the responsibility of being very careful when it comes to rotating his head. Yes, you can rotate his head all the way around. We'll, I guess we'll talk about articulation right now. And he does have also a secondary ball joint at the base of the neck. I'm not as concerned about doing this. I tell you, though, I'm more concerned doing this back and forth on the ball joint because I don't know. He does have quite the long neck. The last thing I would definitely want to do is be breaking the neck. And you really, again, these can be geared towards kids, but they're mostly geared towards adult collectors because if you get too rough housing with these figures, then most definitely things will break. Things will break on his neck. Things will break on Leatherneck's head, for example, if you're not too careful. The articulation also on his shoulders, his arms rotate all the way around. He has a hinge joint as well. And because, again, there's a little in the way of sculpting right here, means that you get afforded a much more range of motion when it comes to his arms hinging out this way. 
He does also have, like Trag, the double hinged on the elbow right there. You can move that back and forth. And like Trag, he does have the rotation in the forearms as well as also in the hands. So you can hinge those back and forth. Upper torso ball joint still has that lower torso waist swivel. The legs bend the exact same way out as well as forward and back. A swivel at the top of the uh, thigh cut there. A uh, single hinge on the knee. And again, when you look at the panel lining that they did use there, it almost makes you think that you could bend it as a double hinge in the knee. But in actual fact, again, you only can bend it a single hinge, allowing that lower leg to rotate. And like with also track, the fo foot moves up and down, and you can also rock it back and forth. Definitely, though, make use of the peg holes on the undersides of their feet, as both the figures do have some issues being top-heavy, as you already have now seen. The figures being slightly more top-heavy, especially more so when it comes to Granitor, just because he has a lot more shoulder sculpting. I would definitely say make use of those display stands that NECA are producing. I mean, yes, you can kind of squat them down, but you'll still have some issue with them standing. Generally, when it comes to the NECA turtle figures, I'm more inclined to bring out a display stand when it comes to these larger build figures. The turtles aren't so much the issue, and generally I don't even use display stands for any of those, but when it most definitely comes to these larger figures like Rocksteady, like Bebop, and especially for Trag and Granitor, don't feel bad that you've got to bring out a clear stand to keep these figures upright. Not only does it mean that you can then put them in better poses than just sort of having to balance them, Obviously, it has nothing to do with the way that they're constructed. Well, I guess it sort of does. They're basing it off the cartoon designs, where in the designs of the cartoon, you don't have to worry that Trag and Granitor have problems sta standing and balancing. But definitely, as it translates to a figure, it could mean, especially when it comes to Granitor with his larger shoulders, that you may have a figure that's more prone to falling over. And again, by all means, dust off those clear stands. They put peg holes on the undersides of their feet for a reason, you might as well make use of those stands, though you guarantee not only can you put them in sicker looking poses, but you're also going to guarantee that these figures aren't going to be falling over. Let me just draw your attention away from the fact that they're using display stands and draw your attention closer to the packaging that they come included with. A nice touch, if you look through that window, a very murky, distorted image in Dimension X is the Technodrome. I don't know if we ever will get a Technodrome from NECA. First of all, NECA doesn't do very much in the way of vehicles, and Technodrome is a pretty involved vehicle to start getting into. I hope at the very least, though, that maybe we, of course, will be getting the neutrinos, and maybe we may even get some of the neutrino, neutrino hot rods. Notable thing about Episode 4 being one of my all-time favorites is that also hot-rodding teenagers from Dimension X has, of course, the introduction of the Turtle Van. And if we don't get any other vehicle for the turtle line from NECA, I hope at the very least we're going to be getting ourselves a turtle van. As a side note, though, that episode does feature one schwanky looking Dimension X tank. I don't think we'll ever get that tank. It would be fun if we got that tank. I don't think we'll ever get that tank. But at the very least, I hope we do get ourselves a turtle van. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the Trag and Granitor, and of the two designs, which one you like the most. I'm still a big fan of Granitor. Trag's not bad. He's not bad. But I like the design of Granitor just a little bit more. Also, I'd like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys for providing the samples of Trag and Granitor that we were able to have a look at in this review. If you're in the market of picking up either one of these, or I guess collectively as they come together in, in, a, in a set of two, you should be able now to find them at local stores. I think they're actually available at Target, if memory serves me correctly. We don't have Target here in Canada. So unfortunately, again, for me picking these up locally, it's not very easy, especially in Canada. But if you guys are in the market of picking these ones up for yourself, you should be able to find them right now at your local Target stores. If you guys are liking the content you're seeing on this channel and like to stay on board, and let's just say you're new here, first time you stumbled onto this video you were looking up trag and granitor and you stumbled onto this channel thank you thank you for that if you are new make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you are new make sure you turn on that bell notification and if you are new make sure you stay to this channel monday to friday 12 p.m and 2 p.m new viewer just said hey wait a minute that's two videos a day that's right two videos a day not that one video a week two videos a day 10 videos 
a week, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Ch Time. Come back here. We got lots of brisk, cold brisk and Ritz crackers. That's the way we fly on this channel. Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Keep your peepers peeled, members of the mob. There's definitely a lot of NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.